Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the switch function, which is an alternative to the if function and having multiple nested if functions inside of each other. Today's question comes from Shannon in Chicago, Illinois, one of my gold members. Shannon asks, I have a few query statements that are super long because they are if functions, immediate if, with multiple nested options. Is there any way to shorten that down so it's not so complicated? Well, yes, Shannon, if is a great function if you only have one, maybe two options to check. But if you've got more than that, three, four, five different conditions, then you're better off using something called the switch function. Let me show you how that works. Now, if you're not familiar with the if function, immediate if, it's basically used to do an if then statement in one single function. I've got different videos on it on my website and on my YouTube channel. I'll put some links below. Go check those out first if you've never used if. Basically, you give it some test, some condition, and then the value if it's true or the value if it's false. For example, if you want to say in a particular query field, if the size, whatever my size field is, equals zero, then put the word none here. Otherwise, put the word sum there. You've got sum. Your value isn't zero. If you've got multiple options to check, it gets more confusing. For example, if size is zero, put none. Otherwise, then we have another if function nested inside the first one. The nested if function says if the size is less than five, put small there. Otherwise, put large. So if it's zero, it'll be none. If it's two, it'll be small. Otherwise, if it's 15, it'll be large. And as you can see, as we get bigger, it gets even more complicated, right? Zero is none, less than five is small, less than 10 is medium, and then 10 and larger is large. So if you have four, five, six different nested if functions, it can start getting hard to understand. Now the switch function pretty much works the same way, but it's just a whole lot easier to read and to write. Here it is. You got test one, then value one, test two, value two, and so on. You can add pretty much as many of these as you want. I think the maximum length of the entire function can't be more than 255 characters. So that's that's pretty big, all right? So switch, size equals zero, none. Size is less than five, small. Size less than 10, medium. Size greater than or equal to 10, large. Make sure your last condition takes into effect all of them, all right? And of course, we're assuming here positive numbers. Maybe you've got a, a validation rule that doesn't let the user put in something less than zero. So as you can see, it's a whole lot easier to write and to read than multiple nested if functions. Let's see how this works in our database. All right, here's my basic customer template. This is part of my free blank template you can download from my website, by the way. I'll put links down below. Uh, look for the blank customer database template. There's a, a fully blank copy, and there's one that has customer data in it too. Real simple customer table. Right, I got four customers in here, and I've got a field in here called family size, right? And I've got 0, 2, 4, and 12. So let's do a simple query based on family size. Create, query design. Let's close that, bring in my customer T and close that. All right, let's bring in the family size field. Where are you? Right there. And right here, we'll put our switch statement. All right, we'll make another field. We'll just call it X, that's fine. All right, and this is going to be switch, open parentheses, family size uh, equals zero, comma, none, like that, comma, family size less than five, comma, small, comma, family size less than 10, comma, medium, comma, family size greater than or equal to 10, comma, large. That's it, one function. Go ahead and run it, and there you go. Small, none, large, right there. So that is the switch function, and as you can see, that was a whole lot easier than writing a big complicated if function with multiple nested if. You'd need, what, four, one, two, three, four different if functions to handle that. Now, if it's something that you're going to be using this switch statement in a bunch of different places, let's say you have to make this family size calculation in a couple of different forms, a few different queries, maybe a report or two, it'd be nice to have one single function called family size 
that you could call from anywhere, especially if your criteria changes later, if they change a, a medium family from five to three. Okay, so in the extended cut for members, I show you how to set up a global module. We're going to call it the family size mod. We'll make a function called family size, and then we'll use something called a select case statement, which basically mimics the switch function we just learned. That's in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page, and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog, and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.